Hey everybody, so I just want to talk today about repairing this mechanical hard drive. You still see these even today. A lot of computers have them. Uh, I do know some of the iMacs actually still have them, even the, the newest ones. You can still get a mechanical hard drive. It's going to pretty much look like this. It's a big thick one. Um, it's pretty heavy still. Uh, this one's a little bit older though. Of course, this is an IDE drive. You can see by the bottom of it that has all these different pins and this is probably about 20 years old. Now there is a big difference between these, this one and maybe something a little bit newer. It's just made of interface. And let me show you that real quick. All right, so we do have this hard drive here. It's a mechanical hard drive. It's probably about 20 years old or so. Um, but it looks pretty familiar if you look at this one versus a newer one. You kind of say, oh, yep, yeah, this is about it. That's, this is kind of what it looks like anyway, right? It still looks about the same. Um, the main thing with this, this type of hard drive and the older ones that you probably see more back in the day would probably be the connection. It has a Molex for the power and then the rest of the pins are for the data as well. And usually you can see them, they actually do come with jumpers every now and then. And you'll notice that usually on the hard drive they do say certain things about jumpers on it like master, slave, or anything, and they usually do tell you the, the correct cable setting that goes on the drive. So usually they do come with a jumper. Compared to this one, this is a bit newer. It has a different type of connection that we even use today. It's a static connection. And the static connection, you can see that in not just mechanical hard drives like this. It, you can also see them in laptop mechanical hard drives, laptop solid state drives, so, solid state drives in general. Um, they're very, it's a very, very popular connection. They usually do pretty good speeds too. But it's a very standard connection that's been out for a very, very long time now. And it's been a standard for a very long time. And you're not going to really see these go away too much because as storage size increases, as you can see, if you're doing any type of video work, if you're do playing a lot of games or anything, you can tell storage is exponentially growing. And you really need storage is at least one terabyte, two terabytes, or you can go all the way up to, they have 16 terabyte drives. They have a lot of different type of mechanical hard drives for that um, just the prices are a lot cheaper than go getting a solid state drive for the same exact cost like a two terabyte solid state drive is extremely expensive compared to a mechanical hard drive you could probably be saving he several hundreds of dollars just getting a bunch of mechanical hard drives for just the price most people do still go with these mechanical hard drives and i do know flash storage has been cheap for a little, little bit now it's been getting cheaper and then eventually it can go back up and once that happens again and as storage spaces get even bigger and compression doesn't really seem to be a thing right now that we're concerned about so when you see games even have updates for 80 gigs 100 gigs and you're making 4k files and now even we have 8k tvs coming out we need more storage space than we ever did before so the mechanical drives are probably still going to be around for a very very long time sorry for a little rant about that but i just like you know to talk about this just kind of make you guys a little bit aware but these are two almost exactly the same there are 3.5 inch drives mechanical drives it doesn't matter how much older you usually see technology get a little bit slimmer or a little bit better you can see they also do have a board so for the newer one it's pretty straightforward any type of static connection usually what you can do for these you can get you can get an external reader that does for SATA what you can do is just plug it in and then you can turn it on and of course you see the blue dot and usually once that if it blinks a little bit that means it's reading and you can just see on the computer so just give it always some time before you give up on it. You can feel the, the disc spinning and everything. So just wait for it to blink. Some of these older drives take a little bit of time. You can see this is taking a little bit of time, but in blinking, now something comes up on my computer. That means I can see it and it's totally fine. So always when you remove these two, you always want to safely remove it, eject the device. Always, because it can be and still be working and running in the background. So always do that once it says safe remove. You can just turn it off and then remove it. Now on the contrast for the one we have here, you need usually a special type of connection. Um, I'm not too sure about the connection if they have a, something like, like this one for it, like an external, because obviously there's pins there and you don't want to just shove something in there with pins because that could mess it up or something. So we usually do have ones that have two different types of connections. And of course, this one's going to be more the IDE connection. So this is going to plug IDE SATA to USB, and that's just going to be for data. And then you also have this one here, which is a Molex connection that usually uses it for power. So if we plug it in, and then we try, and usually right when you plug in the Molex one, you can start feeling it. 
And for this one, it's just completely dead. There's no power, there's nothing. I try to plug it in even here because there's no power anyway, there's really no point of plugging in the USB because this thing should at least spin right when that power is plugged in because the data, all it is, the data is just for it to read. So this thing's completely dead. What we want to do is we want to remove this board here because the board is what controls the power on and power off so if this is completely dead this this disc isn't spinning then the board must be a problem so we do actually have a donor board here and if you see it looks just about exactly the same on the back it's pretty close so you have to get exactly that same model the same serial number you want to get the same firmware the same place it's made just as close as you possibly can um, you really want to match the chips up, so that's the most important thing. Let's just go swap this and see if it just works right away. So I'm just going to do that. And for these, you can just use um, one of these little Torx screws, screwdrivers. They're usually very similar to the ones you use for MacBook screens, if you ever did that. So all they come with is a few Torx screws. So let's just remove it. Right, and you can see it just comes up right away, just like that. And you can see the connection here that actually touches with the metal on the drive itself that makes contact, and those are really important as well. But you can see that comes up, and you can see it's very similar, if not exactly the same. So let's just swap it out, so and hopefully that works. Let's take this up. All right, and let's just put this in and see if it works. If it seats totally fine. All right, and most important thing too, not just the screws, but also you wanna make sure this is making contact, which it is, it should automatically fall right in. So now let's try this time and see if it does anything. So we're gonna plug in our, our ID connection there, and then we're gonna plug in our Molex, which is the power. And right when I plug this in, I expect this to at least spin or make some, you can usually feel it spin right when you plug this in. So I'm going to put my mic next to it, you see if you can hear it, it is spinning, so let's try connecting it and see if it comes up, see if you guys can hear it, you can actually really hear it spin there, so now I'm going to try to connect it to my computer, see if there's anything, usually you can feel it too, if you can't hear it, try to just feel it with your hand, you can feel maybe a little vibration or something. On this one, it's a little bit more difficult because there's no real indicator light or anything for what we have here. All right, so I did check it. It doesn't look like it's coming on my computer at all. It's just spinning. So, good thing we got the power on. Bad thing, we still have an issue. We still can't get the data. So, what it does look like it might be, we can take this off now. We can take out the power because we don't need it anymore. Of course, boards are different. They're made in different places. Um, they manufacture a little bit differently. Some of the chips could be a little bit different. The firmware could be different. And we're really going to focus on that, the firmware. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look under the microscope. When you get these types of boards, you need it exactly the same. And sometimes you need donor boards not only just to replace it. If this would work, that would be great. Maybe what we want to do is replace the firmware chip on that and see if that's going to help make it read. As you saw before, we weren't having trouble powering it on from this board, but we were actually having trouble accessing the data. So when we plugged it into the USB to see the data that's on there. Okay. So what we're doing here now is just removing the firmware chip and we're going to replace it with the donor one. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to access the data that's on the hard drive.
so we did replace this chip right here underneath the microscope and let's go put it back and see if it works now so if you remember before we were able to get actually for it to power on and we weren't able to see any information that was coming up on the screen so hopefully by uh, replacing the firmware chip that we are able now to at least read the data that's on the hard drive so let's put it back um, one of the most important things you want to do is make sure you hit the contacts here so of course it should just go right in it should fit it should just kind of sit right there and as you screw it in it should obviously make it totally fine so all right now we want to test it so i'll try to give you guys a little bit on my screen hopefully it's going to work I can see kind of a little OBS there coming up, but that's fine. So I'm going to connect first, of course. What you want to do is you want to make sure you connect this. Don't do the power first because you can short something. So we do like we did last time. Just connect the little adapter here. We're very lucky we have an adapter for these. But of course, you know, we're a computer shop, so it's nice to have them. Let's plug this in. We plug in the Molex now. Okay. Spinning, let's connect it here. All right, you can kind of see the screen there. Let's see if anything just pops up. Okay, it says my. <laughs> All right, let's click it because it said come up. All right, we got a little error there, but that's good. At least we're reading something. Okay, let me just swap it real quick so we can show you. All right, you can see here it actually does say my book E. And of course we got an error as well but it does look like it works pretty well it's still going pretty smooth um, we definitely want to make sure you transfer the data now because at any moment you know anything this isn't a very stable drive so you definitely want to transfer the data as soon as you possibly can and we don't want to really use this ever again really just because it's not too stable so let's make sure we transfer everything and um, that should be just about it so it's good we did replace the component on the board uh, it does work now we are able to get the data off for the customer uh, we typically like to get these normal boards fixed because getting a donor board there can always be a problem with it um, you know there could just it could just be incompatible in general it could be a little bit like there could be different chips on there that are, aren't compatible with the normal board that we have um, and of course it can get really expensive and sometimes they just you're just not sure if they're going to work or, at all like sometimes some of the places you get because they're donor boards so there could be more problems with it but in this case we were pretty lucky we were just able to replace the firmware chip on there and it was able to power on and work with the donor board which is fantastic so yeah in the future we'll try to do maybe another video where we can do more of the, the starter chip or something else when it's completely dead we'll try to make another video maybe that in the future but um, you guys kind of do see a lot of work involved with this with these types of data recoveries and repairs um, even these older drives nowadays, we still do recover from them because they're still really nice drives. Um, they still were, they used to be really nice drives back in the day and they're still kind of the same technology. If you can see, this is a 20 year old one and then we showed you the differences between that and the newer ones today. Just pretty much a different type of connection that's on there, but the board's very similar. Um, just a little bit of it. So what do you guys use storage for? Um, do you guys use like a lot of storage for like video? Do you guys edit videos? Do you guys stream a bit? Do you guys do a lot of games or anything I do know a lot of that's going on um, these mechanical hard drives will probably see a lot of these still more even in the future they don't really seem to be going away because flash can get more expensive over time and of course the same capacity of like a two terabyte SSD is a very expensive compared to a two terabyte mechanical drive it's several hundred dollars more usually and the prices do fluctuate a lot with uh, the flash you'll see some sometimes it can be very cheap and then it can get very expensive really fast the prices keep going up and down um, it seems like that these mechanical hard drives are kind of steadied where it's going to be. Um, you do see super high capacity mechanical drives still being made today. As we have more 4K footage, if you watch, if there's a lot more 4K footage being available, now they're even making 8K TVs. So to even have all that data on a hard drive or even a disc is, is going to be really something else. So unless we see super compression methods it really don't see any, anything else really changing in the time in the future so there's a big demand for that still even out today you can see a lot of other companies do data recoveries we do them a lot here as well we love to to work on them and it's it's a great feeling too to get the data off um especially when you when people believe that they don't have any hope and then we give them hope so it's always a good thing as well but anyways guys i hope you enjoyed watching 
I'll leave a like down below also. It really does help us a lot. And um, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.